I think he was very excited to be creating a space and, you know, he talked about it with a great deal of excitement of having met the president, I guess it was Mr. Pusey at yeah. the time, uh, you know, certainly talked of their meeting, talked of uh, their having visited his, his studio and that seemed to be a very exciting time for him. And um, I suspect, although I was very young uh, at the time of the Seagram murals, uh, you know, I certainly was aware that the, those paintings had not wound up where they were intended to be, and I'm sure that was a great disappointment to him. So, you know, the fact that he was now uh, able to create a space with a set of paintings, I think, was, uh, you know, very exciting to him. I think seeing the works together was, you know, certainly something that happened when he was working on, on group projects. I mean, I, I don't... Um, with the exception of the, the chapel murals, which were done later and in a much bigger space, I don't remember seeing the entire grouping in, uh, you know, any sort of display such as, you know, would the, be the eventual situation for the murals. But he, typically he would have two or three paintings out, I think. Uh, you know, I particularly remember that with the Harvard murals, and uh, to some degree I remember visiting his uh, studio on the Bowery when he was working on the Seagram murals as well, and he would have several of the paintings out, you know, juxtaposed in some way with each other, but not in a formal, I don't think there was ever an attempt in either of uh, those two studios to kind of recreate the space where the murals would hang the way he did later. Uh, in his 69th Street studio for the chapel murals, or at least for a portion of the chapel mu murals at any one time. I was recently rereading his letters with Catherine Koo, who gave him his first solo exhibition, um, not counting a tiny one he had in Portland as a very, very young man, um, but um, uh, had a room at the Art Institute of Chicago, and this is 1953, so at this point he's only been painting what we think of as Rothko's for three years, or four, three and a half, four years. Already in that moment, I mean, he has a series of about, it's about 12 letters back and forth, and he's talking very precisely about how he wants them displayed, the uh, distance that he wants, uh, he wants the, again, as my sister had mentioned, he wants the viewer to get up very close, he wants to be able to step back. He's already thinking about that, and, it's, and he says he wants, if possible, all of the works to be installed because he really had thought of them as a unit, as a group. So he's, he's already thinking in those terms at that point. Irony of ironies? He didn't go to see the exhibition. With all of his mural series, and I'm going to include in that his black and gray uh, series of canvases at the end, which uh, was at least conceived initially, it appears, for a UNESCO installation in, in Paris. In each of these cases, he creates more works than are actually required for the space that he's working in. So it, it seems that very much a part of his process and the thinking through was not only creating a virtual space where he could mock these up as best he could, but then that clearly part of the process is going to be installing those works and seeing them on site. And of course, of course Harvard is the only place where in the end he was actually able to do that and do that himself and make the decision and decide which of the panels that were also going to be part of the ones of the installation and which would remain additional panels. The new installation and the new approach to working with the Harvard murals, it's, there's, there's first a psychological adjustment you have to make because uh, you, uh, first of all, I've, I've seen these works before, I've seen them in their damaged state, I had not seen them uh, in their original pristine state, but I'd seen them in their da damaged state and so to you first have to come around to the idea that the works are changing and yet maybe they're returning. There's, there is a, there's a little dialogue that goes on there. That said, I, um, what I was most struck by in looking at the works was how much I found a sense of there still being a very authentic surface when I looked at the paintings. I, I, had, I had some confidence that the color would be able to be uh, restored or altered to a point that it was pretty similar to what had originally been there. We were very fortunate to have uh, a canvas that had been rolled and out of the light for decades, so we were pretty sure about that original color. So I was, I was pretty confident, given the level of, of science and expertise being brought to bear on this, that the color would be pretty close, but I was worried what was going to happen to the surface, because my father's surfaces are very subtle. They're, the paints are usually very thinned out and um, it, what happens there is, it, is part of what makes the painting believable. And I was very struck by how I still felt the brushwork, I still felt the sense of, of layering, and um, I'm not quite sure how that happened, but uh, I was very, ha very happy to see that. 
Now, I would have to say I was very excited when you came home with that report because, of course, uh, you know, the possibility of in-painting was an impossibility in, in this situation for exactly the, uh, you know, those, those things that you would lose in terms of the surface and the texture.